happy holidays, everybody. Hope you guys are all enjoying your wonderful Christmas Eve. And, of course, uh, hope you guys are all enjoying your wonderful Christmas tomorrow. But it's going to be happy holidays for a ton of people because not only are we seeing a major snowstorm for Christmas, even Christmas, and bringing white Christmas for millions, but we're looking at another potential holiday storm, a potential major blizzard and snowstorm upcoming potentially by New Year's. So we're looking at... Uh, an upcoming snowstorm that models are showing here for the Midwest for New Year's here. And it's looking like a massive storm here. Models have been very consistent by, with showing it here. So why not go ahead and show you guys what the possibility here. Because this is going to start very soon in around four days from now. So this is definitely something very interesting to get people to think about before traveling for New Year's. Especially for the Midwest in the planes here so we're gonna be looking at what the models say specifically specifically gfs and european and then we'll be looking at the snowfall tools we're not gonna go in great depth because this is still obviously just under a week out so we're gonna just show the general what the models have out here but without further ado let's get in the video so before we take a look at the models i'm just gonna go ahead and show the, what the national weather service has right now obviously nothing out for this snowstorm potentially by new year's um obviously it's not a guaranteed but models have been very, very consistent. Not only consistent with showing it, but consistent on location. So we'll see. Definitely something to keep in mind. But a recap of what we have so far. Of course, of course we have Winter Storm Herald. Uh, it's going to start bringing some snow for in the next few hours for portions of the eastern United States. There we got Winter Storm warnings there. Bears near Cleveland, off, air, uh, off Lake Erie. And even a few warnings there across much of West Virginia there, all the way down to the Great Smoky Mountains in those pink counties there. As well, going to be seeing some very windy conditions. Wind advisory stretching all the way from Texas up to areas like Maine. We have high wind warnings for areas near the tri-state area and the northeastern coast as we're seeing that strengthening low pressure to bring in well over 50 minor wind gusts. That's going to be a huge threat throughout the whole eastern coast there. As well, we're going to be seeing major flooding threats as well areas east of that snow uh, from Harold's. So obviously, going to bring some big flooding threats for D.C., Richmond, much of the east coast, including New York City, and as well, going to help wash away any of that remaining snow that's still there from, da uh, from Gale. As well, we have the uh, extreme arctic blast dangerous temperatures here up to negative 30 degrees for windshields and we do actually have some windshield advisories across portions of the midwest including minneapolis there and areas that got hit really hard by a uh, herald yesterday and we have a few winter storm warnings and advisories up there across higher elevations in the sierras and rockies so that's kind of the recap of what we have right now throughout the next few days for the first holiday which will be obviously christmas even christmas but really watching out for a big threat in the next holiday, which is going to be New Year's. We're looking at a potential massive so snowstorm to bring the start into 2021. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the models have for us. So here's looking now at the GFS here. This is the 12Z. So this is the newest data as what we have right now. So this is what they have. This is Tuesday, December 29th. So this is kind of the this is kind of starting the 28th there 28th gonna see some few snow showers developing there but it's gonna be very uh, very limited there just a few scattered showers and higher elevations but there's that low pressure at 1005 millibars but let's watch now getting to the 29th this storm starts to really blow up here we're having a few um a lot of moisture on both sides of this low pressure it's strengthening gradually now at a thousand millibars you can kind of see this will bring in some very strong winds as well because like, you can see that opening the isobars as it gradually gets stronger. So we're looking at Tuesday the 29th, a few snow showers all the way from mainly the Rockies, mainly the higher elevations like um, obviously Colorado, portions of the north of New Mexico. So that's nothing, nothing any, really any new. But wait until we get near the 30th here. Things get really interesting here. That low pressure rapidly strengthens now at 990 millibars. So strengthening up to 20 millibars in less than 24 hours. So are we looking at a bomb cyclone? There's definitely a possibility here. But high pressure there as well going to bring in some strong winds here. So we're looking at what we just saw with Harold. Some big potential blizzard conditions for portions of the uh, of the Midwest there. This is the 30th. So not, not New Year's yet. But this is New Year's. Uh, this is New Year's Eve Eve, so we're seeing very heavy snow back-to-back uh, -back there for Minneapolis, back-to-back -back holidays. Obviously, they got, they're going to get a white Christmas for, uh, uh, you're going to get a white Christmas, but can we see a, now a white New Year's? 
very heavy snow across portions in the Midwest, all the way from areas like Nebraska and Wyoming up to areas like Mass and Wisconsin there. As we now continue to the 30th, now almost the 31st, this low pressure continues and continues to strengthen there and now at 986 millibars. And it's going to continue to bring in extremely heavy snow for Minneapolis, extremely heavy snow for portions of the Dakotas. And look at these strong winds. We're potentially seeing maybe another blizzard here for the Midwest. So that would mean back-to-back -back blizzards uh, for uh, the same areas for back-to-back -back holidays. So blizzard for really it wasn't really a blizzard on christmas harold because it really was a blizzard two days before christmas but it still would have brought that snow sticking around christmas so it's not really back-to-back -back holidays but it's still gonna bring snow on the ground for those holidays but i mean we're looking at a big snowstorm here it's gonna be quite long lasting here so now that we get into the 31st here that snowstorm is gonna really fall apart there so uh, it's not, it's probably going to be like what Harold did. It didn't actually bring snow on the actual holiday, but it's going to bring in snow the day before and it's going to bring in snow to stick around, uh, on that same holiday. So it's kind of like a, what Harold brought, obviously the snow on Christmas Eve for some of the Midwest areas and now obviously sticking around to Christmas. So it's kind of, kind of a, a Harold scenario. And then, uh, potentially another hail scenario where that second wave of that moisture brings in potential snow there for the south, uh, for the south and the east. So we're looking at a very similar hail scenario. Obviously, hail didn't bring in snow for like a heavy portions there in Nebraska or blizzard conditions for Iowa, or it kind of did for Iowa some portions, but obviously hail was not this widespread or this large. But it's very interesting here because. Obviously, Harold did bring that snow there the day before the hol the, the day before the actual holiday, and brought very heavy snow blizzard conditions. Then you see that second wave there for potential snow now in the south. So we're in the south and the east. So we're looking at a very similar Harold pattern there. So definitely something to keep in mind here. So this is the 31st, and then it's by New Year's Day. It's going to be just a big soaker for the East Coast there. So definitely very interesting what we have uh, forecasted. It's going to be a very similar pattern to what we saw with Harold. So we we'll definitely have to keep a close eye. Models have been very consistent for the past, what, three to four days. I haven't made a video on it yet because obviously that three to four days ago, that was way too far, and I was really focused on Harold. But now that Harold is, it's not over, not even close to over. It hasn't even really um, brought that second wave of snow. It's still mainly rain, but as Harold starts today, I just thought might as well find a new topic since I've been talking about Harold for the past week and up. But let's take a look now at what the European has to say. So here's looking at the European. The European is quite different compared to the GFS. I think the European showed the storm actually still bringing snow for these areas in the Midwest on New Year's Day. So definitely some of the key minds here, but this is what they have the 28th there or the Monday. Very heavy snow continuing now for portions of the west there and portions of the plains, some snow showers there and those higher elevations like southern Colorado, portions of central Utah, just the normal snow at this time of the year for these areas. So that's not un this is not uncommon at all. But watch as it blows up here. So the Europeans taking this way more to the south. I mean very heavy snow all the way up to areas like the south central. And the GFS is not so that much. The GFS kind of took it mainly up here really but now the gfs is kind of taking it as well not only up there but as far south as the south central so there's still a lot of uncertainty as we get closer we get a better idea of course like i did say this is going to be a broad and general forecast not going to go in great great depth because obviously we got to get a lot closer to get the nam and detailed radars and a better look at location accumulation but the fact that they are these mainly all the models are showing it seems to be something very interesting but this is now the tuesday the 29th very heavy snow across portion of the south central a big potential ice threat as well for areas like texas and oklahoma and we're seeing some very heavy snow across the plains here including all the way wyoming nebraska texas but now we get to the 30th things get really interesting there's that strengthening low pressure going to bring some big severe weather to the south there where we have that more humid and uh, kind of more warmer moisture but we go more to the north very heavy snow now for iowa missouri nebraska i mean this is a typical january pattern this is a typical uh january february and march pattern where we have blizzards like this um usually something like this is not too common in the la nina year usually la nina years you get kind of the activity in the northwest and then it goes straight down you don't you don't typically see this in a la nina, la nina year because obviously la nina years 
you get very uh, warm temperatures in the southwest and very dry. So this would be uh, maybe a one-time thing uh, for a, a year like this. But obviously, the past two years have been completely opposite of what forecast would be. So maybe this could be the same thing. But I mean, definitely not too common in a Nina year. So definitely need to keep a look at that. But really heavy snow down to the 31st. And then this is now by... The uh, first, this is not the first of this, uh, the first of January. So as you see, the European still has a storm bringing some snow on the first of January, and not all the way over here just being rain here. It, it does show it being a soaker, but it has that cold air and that low pressure still there in the Midwest to bring in additional snow showers and flurries across all the way to Illinois, Indiana, Min Minnesota portions that got hit really hard by Harold just a few days ago here and they even have it now near january 2nd still bring a few snow showers so definitely not there's not there's a lot of resemblances between the gfs and the european but a lot, a lot of differences so that's at the european here look at the snow cover from this i mean absolutely crazy that is just almost the whole central united states here i mean look at that near three to four feet of snowfall there for portions of south west or yes yeah, southwestern colorado up to near foot all the way to Denver, so there's still a lot of uncertainty, so don't get too excited as of now, but definitely, especially if you're right here, that's where you definitely need to keep a, a, a look out on a massive snowstorm, because that's kind of where you have a better chance of actually seeing this much snow here, but look at that, near two feet near Dodge City there, up to near half foot or more for portions of New Mexico, northern Texas, all the way to western Oklahoma there, gonna get near up to eight plus inches there for, uh, for Kansas City there, up to 14 inches near St. Joseph, and this is when things get to really get crazy now getting near up to two feet of snow there across portions of the midwest there nebraska iowa minnesota wisconsin and portions of the dakota so like i did say this is a typical el nino pattern here this is definitely a typical el nino pattern especially in uh the dead of winter january february and maybe portions of late march depending on the actual outcome or pattern but this is definitely um very this is a very common uh storm track just not really in la nina definitely not too typical in la nina but look at that near 25 inches of snow there in minneapolis 30 plus inches there for portions of iowa wisconsin so we're looking at a ton of snow and i mean a ton of snow this was definitely a hundred percent stay on the ground on new year's day so i mean it's looking like a massive storm i mean not only that all the way from texas and arizona all the way up to areas like Canada border. So this is looking at a massive storm. So obviously this is gonna as well impact a lot of big highways and routes to big cities. So definitely gonna bring in a big threat there for travel if anybody's traveling for New Year's, which I mean, it happens. I mean, I just doubt people, especially with COVID, that many people to start traveling on New Year's, but definitely something to keep an eye on because this is looking it's not like a small storm or anything. It's looking like a potential massive blizzard. I mean, blizzard, blizzard. I mean, just look at the isobars we're looking at. So, with the, with this amount of snow there, I mean, it's gonna be an actual big blizzard. Not like not just like Harold with the blowing snow, but like feet of snow. Harold was like five to eight inches of blowing snow, which is, we already saw the conditions absolutely just. Uh, zero visibility, but with two feet or more on the ground with blowing snow, it, it'll be the definition of a blizzard, basically. But look at that snow there. This is the GFS showing a ton of snow, but not at all for Kansas, not at all for Missouri, not at all for Texas, not at all for eastern Colorado. So there's a lot of differences here. Really, anything south of this won't get any snow when the GFS or when the European gets that snow all the way down to Oklahoma. So a lot of differences here. I mean, that's like near a, a foot difference between malls near Kansas City. So definitely need to get closer. Malls will start to, start to agree more, hopefully. So this is a very broad forecast, like I've been mentioning throughout the whole video, but up to near a foot to three feet across the Rockies in Western Colorado. But it's really when it gets in the Midwest, when that low pressure really strengthens, the, the snowfall rate really increases. So it's gonna really be um, a big snowmaker for a certain region according to the GFS. But with the European, ever since the beginning of that low pressure to its end, that low pressure strengthening, 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 all from the southwest. But the GFS, however, has it not strengthening till really the south or not really till the central plains. So that's kind of the difference between these models and hopefully 
at the end of the next few days after Harold passes by, we should get better ideas. But near half foot there in Pierre, and here, and looking like a big, big mess for Minneapolis up to 25 plus inches. So the only, only similarity between these models is that they show the ha they show it, uh, they showed happening, they show the general location, and they both show this amount of snow in its exact region. So definitely something to keep in mind here, especially for Minneapolis, especially if you're in the upper Midwest there where it's really uh, a very common thing to happen here. So you need to keep a close eye on it. So I will keep making uploads on this. And as we get closer, I will have more depth, more in depth, more information, more models, all that like I do with Harold. So hope you guys do enjoy your holidays and I most likely will do a vlog uh, with the snow if I, if I get snow which it's supposed to snow from Harold So that should come out if I make it if it comes if I make it it should come out tomorrow here But hope you guys enjoy the day hope you enjoy your holidays and a Merry Christmas